Hi. We're Zenefits, and we do something incredibly boring. Insurance, benefits, and HR. But we're here today because you guys are looking for disruptive companies. And we are going to mess stuff up for two very large industries by redefining what it is that insurance brokers do for their clients. Now, we're an insurance broker, and insurance brokers make very generous commissions from insurance companies. Uh, but one of the fun things about being an insurance broker is it turns out it's illegal for them to rebate any portion of that commission to their clients. So I can't give you guys money back. Um, but what I can do is provide a whole lot of services and software for free on my platform that you might otherwise have to pay for. And so on Monday, we announced the launch of our HR as a service platform, where we take, we take on and manage all of your payroll, all of your benefits, all of the associated HR administrative work that comes with those systems. And this is important, we do all of it for free because we make money on the insurance commissions. Now, if you're an HR outsourcing company, that's gotta scare you a little bit because the product that you charge an arm and a leg for, we now offer for free. And if you're an insurance broker, we're gonna drink your milkshake because we're gonna do 10 times as much for your clients as you do for them, and they're gonna switch to us in droves. Now we're gonna jump into a quick product demo, but first, if you don't have payroll and benefits set up yet, we can help you get it set, get it set up. It's probably the least painful way to do it. It's the only way that doesn't involve about a dozen trips to the fax machine, everything's online, all that kind of stuff. But one of the great things about this product is that if you already have payroll and benefits, uh, you don't have to set anything up, you don't have to re-enroll or switch anything. You can just connect your existing systems to our platform. And so what that looks like with payroll is you tell us, here's the credentials I use to access my payroll system. We import all the information, it takes about 30 seconds. But this is a two-way connection, so you'll see later on, we also push information back into the payroll system. We you know, help you set up new employees, we set up deductions for various different benefit plans that you might have. And then we do the same thing for health insurance. And, and this is really cool, because this is what's gonna make us a billion dollar company. Um, if you wanna add your health insurance benefits to our platform, um, you make us your broker, and it's this easy. You tell us your carrier, your policy number, you click next, and then you basically sign with your mouse, and you're done. Um, so we take this letter, we submit it to the insurance company, they make this back-end change in their systems uh, where we become the broker of record, um, and that does two things. One is it allows us to act on your behalf to manage your benefits plan, but two, we collect all of the commission revenue on the account going forward. Uh, nothing changes about your plans, nothing changes about your pricing, your insurance cards all stay the same. Now once you've connected these systems up to our system, that's where the magic really happens. Um, because once you've connected this stuff, we can start to mechanize it. We can start to replace people and paper with software and technology. Um, and that comes out in a lot of different ways, but one of the important ones, or one of the coolest ones, is onboarding. So if you wanna hire someone on our system, you just click hire, and you tell us five things. You tell us like basically their name, their email, how much you're gonna pay them, how many stock options you're giving them, one or two others. Uh, and basically, you're done. It is literally the least amount of work that is physically possible to do for you to hire someone. And once you click done, we email the prospective employee, um, we bring them to our site where they can create an account, and then we have them sign an offer letter and an IP assignment agreement that we have auto-generated based on templates that you provided to us, so we use your documents. Um, and then once they've signed those, um, we walk them through this process where we collect all of their information for payroll, their personal details, their bank account information, their tax withholding information. We verify their immigration eligibility. And then at the end, they sign with their mouse, and this stuff never crosses your desk. We put it directly into your payroll system and set them up. And then we walk them through a process where we uh, get them enrolled in your health insurance plan and your 401k and sort of whatever other benefits that you offer. Um, now, it makes sense for you to outsource this stuff to us because HR is only 20% strategic. Things like who you hire, the kind of culture that you create. 80% of it is administrative. Um, it's stuff like getting paperwork filled out, making sure that a new employee gets enrolled in you know, payroll, medical insurance, dental insurance, 401k, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, when you know, we, if we can sort of automate that stuff, if we can take all these headaches off your hands, that's gotta be something that's gotta make sense for you to switch to us. Um, and if we can do all of that for free, because we make money on the health insurance side, why wouldn't you switch to us? 
And when you switch to us, that's gonna be very disruptive for a group of companies whose clients have never before today had a reason to switch. Thank you. Judges? Why, why do you do payroll and benefits? What is the synergy between those and why don't you just focus on one of them at a time? Why payroll and benefits? Yeah, it's not obvious to me. Why can't you just, if each is a big enough market, why don't you just provide one of them? So we actually resell the payroll system. So we're not actually doing the payroll ourselves. We resell, we work with all of the major payroll providers and then we, if you need it set up, we resell sort of one or two of them that we favor. Um, but the service that we provide, you need to do both of them for it to be a comprehensive solution because there are so many interconnections between benefits and payroll. So. Uh, you know, when you hire someone, uh, we can only do all of it if we do payroll and benefits to set them up for your company. And, you know, as soon as you set someone up with your health insurance plan, you need to go back into the payroll system and set up their deduction. Because if they pay for 20%, you need to set that up. And then, by the way, that changes whenever they turn 30 or they get married or they have a kid or, you know, any of them, they move, change addresses, suddenly that, those amounts all have to shift around. And so, you know, we actually started with health insurance and we realized that like, it was impossible for us to really take it off people's hands unless we did the payroll as well. Um, and so that's what we do. And do you perform, uh, at least to my knowledge, part of what's valuable about an insurance broker from a relationship point of view is they'll go to bat for you. You know, you have an employee who has an odd medical condition and they need to go and fight with the insurance company to provide coverage. Yeah. You know, sort of in a gray zone with this quagmire of trying to get reimbursement. Yeah. <laughs> so do you perform that as well? Because I'd be apprehensive to switch if I don't know that you're gonna provide that for me. So absolutely. Um, if you call, there's a phone number on our site. If you call it my cell phone rings, please don't do it right now because it's backstage right it's now. That scales. Um, yeah, but you know, we can, that doesn't scale, but you can hire, <laughs> if, you, if you make enough money on this, then you can have really great customer support. There's no reason for us to lose on that. The other thing that happens that's kind of interesting on that front is in 2014, one of the reasons like, you know, insurance companies, sometimes they deny claims and you get into fights with them on this kind of stuff. Like that happens because um, it's sort of the wild west out there in a lot of ways about what they can do and they can say that's a pre-existing condition, that sort of thing. In 2014, a lot of that game goes away because of the Affordable Care Act. You know, it's very clear like what insurance companies have to pay for, what they can't. I suspect that the, the volume of sort of issues that people have will go way down at that point. Um, and so I don't think we'll, we'll get as many as, as you might today with an insurance broker. When, when Gary um, Lauer talks about e-health and the competitive advantage they had on that platform, he always talks about how hard it was to get all the regulatory clearances um, from each of the different states. So I understand you're talking about a slightly different business model, but what does that mean for you? You, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to apologize because I, I can't, couldn't hear you, but you so, said how difficult it was to get the clearances from yes, the different states? Yes, so eHealth had to get set up to yeah. be able to be able to be cleared to actually sell uh, insurance yeah. because each state has a different registration process. So, and, sorry, there's a site you can go to online that's a service for brokers. You select the states you want to be registered in. You tell it which state your home registration is in you give it your credit card, and it gets you licensed in all those states. So we got licensed in 35 states in like 24 hours a couple weeks ago. And, and is that because, just a point of clarification, because you're a broker rather than you're direct selling? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I, uh, I, all I know is I, uh, because I'm licensed in California, right. they recognize my license in all the different states. Okay. What's a much bigger challenge for us is not the licensing, it's actually the data ingestion, um, because we need to pull in all of the information about the pricing, what all the plans are. I mean, every state has a completely different insurance right. system. A lot of it will be standardized in eight months. Um, and that kind of work is, I mean, there's nothing particularly technically challenging, but it's, it's boring and not a lot of fun and hard, you know, in, in that way, sort of hard to replicate. Mm -hmm. uh, how much money do you make as a broker? You say you, you talk about how you get these fees. I don't know how much that is. What, how much is it? So, you know, I don't want to get too specific on numbers, but it's, you know, a, a percent of, of, um, of the premiums that people pay, and it's paid and in perpetuity. So there's just, you're not going to answer that question. You know, call it, call it four to five percent of premiums, a couple hundred bucks per employee per year, and, and for the, you know, lifetime that they're a client. Huh. Okay. 
What's the ideal uh, company size of your target customer? Two to 99. Um, with probably more success in two to the two to sort of 50 range. Got it, and that's because there isn't a full-time HR professional who's threatened by this solution? Well, hopefully HR professionals aren't threatened by it. Um, well, you're you know, essentially HR... making them obsolete, right? Their, their job is to collect all this data and kind of provide a consultative uh, service to employees. Well, I think HR professionals, they see their job as counseling people on their careers and you know thinking about company culture and stuff like that. And so hopefully this can free them up to do those kinds of things. Mm. Um, I mean, filling up, no one likes filling out paperwork. Um, and so whoever's doing that for a company is usually our best friend. And sometimes that's, sometimes that's the founder, sometimes that's an HR person, sometimes it's their accountant. Um, you know, we've got an accountant who just pushes, uh, pushing all of her clients over to us because, you know, she has to deal with all this stuff, setting up deductions and the payroll system and all this stuff. And, you know, she doesn't charge for it. She does it for free for, to get the accounting dollars. And if she screws it up, she gets sued. So, you know, she'd rather us handle it. How do you, so how do you move up market from, so if it's 50 employees, it's about $10,000 per year per account of revenue to you. <clears throat> How do you move up market to the 100, 200, 500 employee companies so you can make probably, significant revenues? Probably time and experience um, and, and hiring uh, really good HR people so that to, to roll off's point, um, you know, when a company's asking us questions like, hey, if I call in with questions, who's going to pick up the phone? Is it you, the guy who's been selling insurance and then for you said weeks? my cell phone, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> there's nothing, we don't have to have it always, we, we don't have, it doesn't have to always go to my cell phone. We can send it to <laughs> other people's cell phones as well within the company. Yeah. And so, um, Thanks for clarifying that. I think structurally, <laughs> you know, what you, what you want is, you know, if it, were, um, if it were a business where we're making tiny, tiny margins, um, you know, then it's like, gosh, like, you know, we're gonna have to have our call center you know, overseas and, and you know, people are not gonna be able to really spend time on the phone with people. You know, we, that's not our situation. Like we can match other brokers you know, in, on the service side of the world. I, uh, uh, do you know BackOps? BackOps is a company we, that we've invested in that does these kinds of services, although in a different way. Can you compare? Because they're having a lot of success getting, startups in particular are just yeah. dying for these kinds of services. How do you compare to them? How do you sell against them? So there are a couple guys that do this kind of stuff. So BackOps is one. Yeah. Um, the big one is Trinet. Um, uh, there are a bunch of others um, with various different models. The biggest difference between us and those companies is that they will charge usually on the order of $100 to $200 per employee per month, and we are a free service. Yeah. Um, and so I mean, Trinet's a great example, because sometimes I think in you know, being in the tech world, we can sort of overestimate Trinet's size and influence in this market. And you know, Trinet, don't get me wrong, they're a multi-billion dollar company. They probably did 200 to 300 million dollars in revenue last year, but they are tiny. They are an insignificant speck because they have 7,000 clients in the United States, and there are two million small businesses with between two and 99 employees. So the main way you sell against them is you don't, you don't charge anything. Well, usually They with, all charge something. With, right? with, yeah, we don't, we're free. Um, we don't charge anything. We usually don't try and recruit clients away from Trinet because it's such a pain to switch off them that it's like the success rate is low. But I mean, don't get me wrong, we still, we're still going to kill them. Um, you know, our, our idea is like we starve the beast. So you know, anyone who's thinking about setting up Trinet. I don't um, know what Trinet is. I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, it sounds like something that it's a real pain that some people have to deal with, but that's something I've never done is dealt with stuff that's a pain like that. So, Mike, every single yeah. one of your companies uses them. <laughs> Well, Probably. no, because they're using backups now. Oh, okay. Which is like far yeah. superior. <laughs> far superior. To right. and, 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 <laughs> and backups, I mean, I think they make a lot of money. They make a lot of money on the accounting dollars. So there are some companies like backups, and there are one or two others that actually are great potential partners for us because, like, you know, they're, they're charging you really to do the accounting stuff, and they're managing all this payroll crap kind of for free. And so we can go into them and say, listen, why don't you have us, you know, their backups is actually sending the insurance stuff to an outside broker. They're not an insurance broker. Yeah. And so if you're back ops, you could, you know, we could work with you, we could say like, listen, you don't care who the insurance broker is on these clients, right? So why don't you send your clients well, to us and we take up, half your work off your hands? Unless they wake up and go, oh, wait a minute, they're making, you said 200 a year, 400 a year, whatever you said, uh, we should become a broker. And also we just become in California and then, you know, 35 other states overnight, because it's online, it's like getting a degree to be a, you know, 
not a priest, but you know, when you get the religious stuff. And so I'm just saying like, why wouldn't they get into that business since there seems to be quite a bit of money there and you said you're gonna be a billion dollar company. I'd go with that way if I were them, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, Backups has probably about 100 clients. Um, we signed up 50 in the first eight weeks that we were live. Yeah. Um, you know, the so they interesting need to thing, wake up and jump on this business model immediately. Well, I think the question is, you know, if they woke up, um, if other companies started doing this, it's hard to do. Like, you know, you can't, we... Well, no, you said it wasn't that hard. You said it was like, technical, it's boring, it's a lot of data, but you said it's not that hard, you just got to do it, right? I mean, it's, you know... You know, it's, it's, I think it's about focus. So I think it would be hard You're not for focused because you've given your cell phone number out as your main customer service number to all your customers. <laughs> I'm just kidding shit. Now. That's Sorry. true, yeah. But I, I think, <laughs> you know, listen, I think one of the interesting things about this market when you talk about follow-on competition is there's no price competition in this market. So usually with follow-on competition, you worry about price erosion. You worry that like, gosh, someone's gonna come in and undercut you on price and like yeah. offer the same service for less money. Like you can't get any cheaper than free. So you know, no one can compete on price. The only thing you can compete on is the breadth of your service offering. And so the next competitor to us is gonna have to offer something not just as good as us, but 10 times better in order to get people to switch off of our service. Um, and if, if, unless we're asleep at the wheel on the product side, you know, we're gonna keep building out the platform and its product offerings. It's gonna be very hard for someone to do. So your only real fear is that somebody then kicks back the broker fees to the company or the individual, it's going cheaper than free. That's not legal. Yeah. So there's laws in all 50 states that prevent you from right. doing that. The alternative is just purchasing without a broker. In other words, it's th that's what I realized on the e-health model, which is there, it's either saying, hey, I, don't, I can get cheaper insurance if I don't go through a broker, but once you go is, through is a broker. Yeah. Is it cheaper to get insurance if you don't? You can tell I do a lot of this. No, no, no. The pricing is the, the same everywhere. The pricing is fixed. So it's, it's fixed from, a, you know, there's a regulatory framework. You're not gonna pay it any more or any less for insurance with me than other brokers, um, or, or going direct to the insurance company. Yeah. Great, so uh, we're, we're just about out of time, but great job, you guys, that's Zenefit. Thank you. Thank you. So